It has now been four weeks since the release of the Blood Money update. This content was to bring in new outlaw activities and there was a lot of hype for this content, but unfortunately as soon as it was released, it didn't go down too well with the community. Myself, personally, I've been enjoying the content. I enjoy the Blood Money missions and I enjoy going for the opportunities but I am just one person. I do not represent the whole community. And one of the biggest complaints from the community is that this content is just not paying out that well. You'll go through some of these blood money missions only to make about 10 to $20. The opportunities can pay quite a bit more, but you do need to spend about 30 minutes going through them. Well, today, a lot of this is changing. This is still content as part of the blood money update, but it has a much higher payout and it's actually very fun to go through. This is the quarter arms. Before I do get into the video, if you enjoy the content here and want to see a bit more from me, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. We are uploading videos every single week, giving you the latest tips and tutorials on Red Dead Online. If you do want to see a bit more content from me, but it not being Red Dead Online, then you can find a link in the description down below, which will take you over to the second YouTube channel. Over there, I am streaming a variety of different games. At the time of recording this video, I literally just finished the live stream going through these new Red Dead Online Call to Arm missions. We spent about four and a half hours playing through this and you're also going to see a few of those clips within this video. But we also do play a variety of other games. So if you do want to see that, there is a link in the description down below. Getting back into the video. New content was added today as part of the weekly drip fed content. What Rockstar normally does with all of their games, including GTA Online, is that they do one major push. This major push will include everything within the update, but only certain things within that content will be set to be live on day one. Everything else is due to be drip fed over the next couple of weeks and months. Today is no different, except that the drip fed content this week is actually very good. Probably the best ever drip fed content that we've ever had within Red Dead Online. So far, it has only just been released for a few hours, but it's gone down very well for the community. It's very fun to go through and it has an insanely high payout for what it is. So let's actually just go through everything. The first thing, what is Call to Arms? Call to Arms is the new survival mode as part of Red Dead Online. You'll have to go through 10 different rounds, with each round progressively getting harder and harder as it brings in new types of enemies and more of them. Once you get all the way to round 10 and you manage to kill all those enemies, there you go, it's done, it's completed. But this can take you about 30 to 40 minutes when going through it. This also isn't just based on one location. You have up to five different locations that you can choose to go through. This being Blackwater, Valentine, Strawberry, McFarlane's Ranch, and also Fort Mercer. And depending on which one you go through also depends on the different types of enemies that you'll get. So when you first start off, you're going to have enemies running in and trying to shoot you down. But as these rounds progress further, you can eventually have different types of wagons with enemies inside them. You can also have war wagons. And you'll also come up to enemies wearing the armor that you find within the main mission, kill them each and every one. This armor is what you wear within the mission, but now you're fighting against it. These are the different types of enemies and enemy vehicles that you'll have to deal with when going through the rounds, no matter what you pick. But there are also some unique activities depending on the location. Now, I haven't played through every single one of them, but I have played through three. Valentine, Blackwater, and Fort Mercer. In Valentine, it seemed like I was just getting the enemies that I previously just mentioned out. But when we went over to Blackwater, there were enemies coming in from Bo, making it a slightly more tricky as we didn't expect anyone to be coming from that angle. In Fort Mercer, it was the toughest thing that we had to deal with because we had to deal with enemies using cannons. We were in Fort Mercer trying to defend it, but around Fort Mercer, there was a number of different cannons which only the NPCs could get to. In some cases, it completely destroyed us. But if you do manage to get through everything, you get a very good payout at the end. To start all of these call to arm missions, you need to head over to the post office or your camp lockbox. There you'll find a letter which does say call to arms. You then need to collect that and then you need to back out. Now, unfortunately, Rockstar are not the clearest company when it comes to showing players where they need to go and what they need to do. So whilst I was live streaming this game, there was a lot of players questioning of where they need to go once they collect the letter. You don't actually need to go anywhere physically within the game. All you need to do is open up your satchel, go across the documents, go all the way down to telegram missions. Once you click that, you'll find a letter which says call to arms. 
Once you've done that, you'll find five different locations which you can select. One thing that you'll notice straight away is that under each of these different locations, it will say standard. And this is to show you the difficulty when going in through these survival game modes. My first time going through this, I really thought that this was going to be similar to the Telegram missions. If anyone remembers back in January, February, March or whenever it was when they were first pushed, you had to go through the Telegram mission on standard for it to increase the difficulty the next time you go through it, well, increase it to hard. Once you complete hard, it'll then take it all the way up to ruthless, and you can't actually decide what difficulty you want to go through it by yourself. And I expected this to be very similar for these survival game modes, but it isn't. It has standard here, but it seems like the difficulty, even after completing on standard, it will remain standard. I don't know if Rockstar is going to add anything at a future date where there's other type of survival game modes in different locations at a higher difficulty or whether or not they're going to add difficulties to each of these missions. But as of right now, there's none of that. It is only standard difficulty. And there seems to be quite a few different players getting confused with this. Even though it is on standard difficulty, it can get very difficult when going through it. Going through wave one, you'll only need to take down 24 different enemies. And these enemies are very basic. They have no armor, they're dealing no damage whatsoever, and they just run at you with their weapons. Very easy to handle. But once you get to around round four, that's when things start to get a bit more difficult. This is when you start to get different enemies coming in on wagons and from here it just escalates you start to get those wagons coming in but now it's war wagons and it starts out being just one but eventually progresses for four five or even six different wagons at a time you then get the enemies wearing the different bits of armor this is where things really get hard because it takes quite a bit of ammo for you to be able to take these down most you're trying to take those down there's other enemies just flowing into the location that you're currently at and it can get overwhelming very quick one thing to point out is at the beginning of this game mode, you're given five minutes to change locations of allies. These allies are here to help you and you put them into different locations behind cover so that they can protect you best. Some players are saying that they're just there for a help in hand, but they actually play a vital role in the payout that you get at the end. So even though when all of these different types of enemies are flowing into the location that you're currently at, you can very easily run away and slowly take them down one by one, but you also don't want to, because if they kill your allies, it won't end the game, but it reduces the reward that you can get at the end. So let's actually talk about the reward that you get after completing all 10 of these rounds, because this is the highest paying activity that we've ever had within Red Dead Online. It's not just $20 for the time and effort that you put into this. My first time playing through this, I managed to get three gold bars, $799, and on top of that, 6,000 XP. My second time going through this gave me three gold bars, $940, and 6,930 XP. Whereas my third and final time going through it was three gold bars yet again, this is the norm, $989 and then 7,400 XP. See, we tested this a few different times because after going through it for the first time, we actually thought that this was just going to be a first time bonus, but it actually isn't. This is the norm for this type of game mode. You will get a lot of gold if you manage to go all the way through. It seems like you'll get 30 gold nuggets for every single round. But as for cash and XP, it seems to be a multiplication of you being able to survive the number of different rounds and also how many allies that you can save all the way through. So the first time that we went through it, most of them died. In fact, all of them did die, but we did manage to go and get all the way to round 10. My second time going through it, which gave me $920, yet again, they all did die. All my allies died again. But this time around, we managed to get them all to round 10 before they were all executed by a war wagon. And then finally, my third attempt when going through it, we managed to get all the way to round 10 and we managed to get three allies that managed to survive all 10 of those rounds. And this gave us a higher payout. If you was to save more than three, you're going to be pushing to around $1,000. We don't actually know what the maximum amount is. Your payout also doesn't really matter if you die or how many enemies that you manage to kill throughout the games. So there were times where I managed to be first and there were times where I managed to be last with the most amount of kills. There were times that I went through all of this without dying and there was times where I died halfway through. As long as you manage to get all the way through round 10 and some of your allies manage to survive, you'll get a much higher payout. Now if you don't get to round 10, you'll get considerably less. 
Just like if you went through this and your allies all died off, you'll also get considerably less. So there's an incentive for you to get a high round, but there's also an incentive to make sure as many NPCs survive as possible. Now this is a game mode with an insanely high payout. Full of missions that I went through, it took me anywhere between 35 all the way up to 45 minutes to finish. And if we were to compare that to the number one way originally to make money, which was the collector role, you can actually make more money going through this in less time compared to if you went through the collector sets and sold them off, being the family heirlooms, the tarot card swords and the tarot cards pentacles. And with those collector sets, you don't get gold unless you're also trying to complete different types of awards or daily challenges. So this means that these call to arm missions are now the number one way to make gold and money. Unfortunately, you can't farm these. It doesn't cost anything for you to enter these, but you do have to have a 45 minute cooldown after finishing. But as soon as that cooldown's over, you can go straight back into it again and it still works out being better than collecting. What you can do if you was trying to maximize money is just go through this, spend 35 to 45 minutes going through, complete it after round 10, get anywhere between $800 to $900, and then spend the next 45 minutes going through different types of collector sets. And once that 45 minutes is up, you'll go back over to this and go for it all over again. Not to mention that if we were still comparing these new missions compared to the collector role, going through this and fighting off waves of enemies is so much more entertaining than finding and picking up collectibles. So it's definitely worth going through. But anyway, guys, that is absolutely everything that you need to know about these call to arms missions. If you do have any questions, then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see ya.